Hello everyone. Last May, the Taliban attacked an Iranian border checkpoint, killing some soldiers as captured in footage. All the weapons they used were left behind by the US Army after withdrawing, including M16 rifles, M240 machine guns, and Humvees. Immediately after, many rumors circulated. Some said that was the reason why the US left $7 billion worth of valuable weapons to the Taliban. If true, they were indeed crafty before we discuss the causes of the conflict. Let's make a comparison to see the audacity of the Taliban. Iran has twice the population with nearly 80 million people. Its regular army is 350,000, 4.3 times larger. Plus, it has a modern defense industry and superior economic potential with a GDP 24 times larger. Accordingly, theoretically they could crush the Taliban in a heartbeat. However, every victory of the US has made the Taliban very confident. Right after the clash, they mobilized thousands of combat vehicles near the border and conducted large-scale military drills. A senior official boldly declared, we will fight the revolutionary guards of Iran with more fervor than when facing the US before. The Taliban would soon conquer Iran if their leaders give the green light. It must be admitted that water is a nagging issue for the government on the southeast side. Millions of Iranians depend on water from Afghanistan for farming, fishing, agriculture and daily activities. In 1973, the two sides signed a treaty allocating resources, whereby Afghanistan would ensure a flow of 22 cubic meters per second to Iran. However, in 1996, the Taliban gained control of most of the territory, and trouble began. They ordered the closure of the Kajaki Dam, blocking the Helmand River's flow, gradually reducing downstream water, leaving insufficient water for agricultural activities. That's not all. In 1998, the Taliban attacked the Iranian consulate, killing eight diplomats and taking 50 hostages. The reason was that Iran had supported the Northern Alliance of the Taliban in the civil war, combined with the previous water blockade event. Iran deployed 200,000 troops to the border, preparing to attack, but the issue was resolved in time under the intervention of the United Nations. In 2001, the US marched troops into Afghanistan to search for terrorist traces and quickly gained control of the country. A democratic government friendly to the West was established. Iran found itself in an awkward situation, forced to secretly support the enemy to fight against the enemy they had actively supported with money and weapons, helping the Taliban wage guerrilla warfare. Time passed until 2015 when the US felt too tired of the meaningless and costly war. They withdrew most of the troops and stayed behind the scenes, giving way to the Afghan government to rebuild the country and continue fighting the Taliban. A year later, President Ashraf Ghani started building the Salma Dam on the Hari River, worried that the water source sustaining 3.4 million people would be cut off. Iran tried to sabotage it many times but failed. But in 2017, a dam named Kamal Khan was built on the Helmand River. Iran fell into a state of fury as millions more lives would be in Afghanistan's hands. They proposed negotiations to change the situation but were repeatedly rejected. Some Middle East commentators believe the US is the director behind those hydroelectric projects. They know the Taliban will eventually prevail. Therefore, to complicate relations with Iran, those dams were built. From a tactical perspective, this could also be true. In 2021, the Taliban seized power in Kabul. Iran rejoiced that finally, the enemy they tried to regard as a friend was standing on the glory peak. Even more delightful was that the three-year drought could be addressed in the east when more water flows in from Afghanistan. However, after many negotiations, the two sides could not reach an agreement. Afghanistan was unwilling to release more water from the dams on the Hari and Helmand rivers as they were also suffering from drought and needed water for agricultural activities. Although the Taliban government declared, we will share water resources equally, in reality, Iran accused the neighbor of violating the 1973 treaty, only meeting 4% as agreed. Amidst the severe water shortage, there were tense protests in many Iranian cities, giving the government headaches without a way to appease the public. President Ibrahim Raisi stated to the media, we will not allow the rights of the Iranian people to be violated. He asked the Taliban to be serious about their commitments, otherwise they would be attacked. A few days after the statement, the Taliban attacked an Iranian border checkpoint, killing some people. The cause was said to be an argument over water. Right after the incident, 
diplomats from both sides sat down to negotiate and saw dialogue as a sensible solution. Their governments also simultaneously reassured the public that the situation was under control. However, in another development, General Ahmad Reza Raiden of Iran warned, we will decisively retaliate against any border violations, and Afghan authorities must take responsibility for reckless actions contrary to international rules. Meanwhile, the Taliban amassed troops near the border and staged military drills flaunting the weapons the US had left behind. Some of their chieftains even declared, we have no water left, and even if we open the dams, water cannot flow into Iran. In fact, a famous Taliban general, Mobin Khan, even filled a can of water and said, I'm taking some water for the president of Iran since he sent us serious warnings not to attack as we would be terrified. This was outright taunting and provocation. Indeed, it's a country full of reckless people. If drought and riots continue like now, sooner or later, Iran will have to activate the mode of obtaining water at all costs. When that happens, the struggle for survival will become more intense than ever.